Hey, this is Freddie Rose. You're listening to Walking the Floor. Yes. And number one. Number one. I'm walking the floor over you. Walking the floor. I'm walking the floor. Walking the floor over you. Hola, senores and senoritas, and welcome to this special midweek edition of Walking the Floor. It's a very, very special. It's, it's so special that we had to put it up on Wednesday uh, because I got the chance to interview one of the true superstars of the sport of boxing, Mr. Freddie Roach. Superstar trainer Freddie Roach here on my program today. Um, before we get into that, I have more show updates because they continue to grow. It looks like I'm going to be playing up in Ventura and Camarillo with my good friend Timmy Curran. I don't know if this is official. Maybe I shouldn't be announcing this, but I think it is official. Uh, at the Revo Surf Shop in Ventura and then also the Revo Surf Shop in Camarillo. And that's going to be December 1st and 2nd. So let's just bring that to a full tally. We've got Mollusk Surf Shop in Silver Lake on uh, November 12th. We've got the Rob Machado Foundation uh charity event down at um uh at the belly up on the 15th of november now we have the first and second at revo surf shops in ventura and camarillo and then x we're opening for x on december 18th in, in at the casbah in san diego and then up uh for new year's eve at the roxy here in la so lots and lots of shows coming up in the next couple of months please make it out Most of those are going to be acoustic. The X shows are going to be full band electric. So please, please, please come out and see it. Pick a show. Pick a come to all of them. Why not? All right. Before we get to today's interview, let's talk about my good friends at Zounds.com. Zounds.com. You know them. You love them. They're real musicians over there. They're not. uh, They're not salespeople. They're musicians. They play music. So if you need to get some music gear, you go over there. You find whatever it is you need. They have everything. You know, from large and small, and they'll give you the best prices. If you find somebody else that beats their price, they're gonna beat it for you. Somehow, it's magic. And then they're gonna get it, uh, you know, fast and free right to your door with uh, two days shipping on 90% of their orders. It's a pretty good track record over there. Zounds.com. Get to it. All right. So anybody that listens to the show or knows me at all knows that I'm a, a psychotic boxing fan. And on today's show, I get to interview uh, boxing trainer Freddie Roach, who is, you know, if you follow the sport at all, you absolutely know who this guy is. If you don't follow it, um, he's a guy who started out as a pro fighter, comes from a family of fighters. Then when his uh, professional boxing career was over, he segued into becoming a trainer. He's trained, um, oh God, he's trained everybody. He's trained Mike Tyson, Oscar De La Hoya, Johnny Tapia, Miguel Cotto. But he's definitely most famous for being the guy that developed Manny Pacquiao into the superstar fighter that we all know today. And the reason that I'm putting this interview up in the middle of the week is because Pacquiao's got a big fight this weekend. Um, I think it's November 5th. He's fighting Vargas. It's available on pay-per-view, so find that, you know, wherever you are. And it's his first fight. He had a, I guess you could call it a retirement. He was supposedly retired after the last fight with Bradley, but that was only seven months ago. So it's uh, not much of a retirement, but he's back and uh, ready to do the business. And we're going to see how the 37-year-old Manny Pacquiao looks come this Saturday. So anyway... Uh, I talked to Freddie about their preparation leading into this fight and how training has changed over the years with Pac-Man. I uh, talked about the, the disappointing loss to Mayweather and some goofy stuff that surrounded that fight. Um, we talked about the current state of boxing. We talked about a lot of stuff. This is Freddie Roach on Walking the Floor. So thanks for having me today. It's uh, it's obviously very busy here, like it always is. Um, so thanks for taking the time to, to do the show. How do you feel heading into this fight, into Manny's fight? Um, I feel really good. Manny, uh, he's really been a, he's been a little bit different in this camp. He's been a lot more aggressive this, this camp. He's looking really good. He's uh, he's shown me signs of like the old Manny a little bit, and I, I like I, I like, like how? Old Manny. Uh, with his sparring partners being really, really aggressive with him and uh, hitting him big shots and jumping on him and you know maybe not trying to knock him out so much but the thing is being very aggressive and um, 
quick using his speed, his foot, foot speed and his hand speed together. He's really putting everything together for this fight, and he looks he looks really good. This is the best I've seen him in a long time. Really? Really. I mean, uh, you know, he was going through a mode a little bit for a while that he, he just had to beat his opponent. He didn't have to knock him out or hurt them, and that's really not the fight game. You right. know, and uh, you know, if you can get somebody out of there, get them out of there because you know, one punch can change things. And it did happen to us with Mar- Marquez Morales. Sure. Uh, we <laughs> we stayed one second too long, and then mm. we got knocked out. And right. many has stopped him like he should have in the round before. That, that wouldn't have happened. And so I I like what I see. Um, I think this guy's in trouble. I mean, this is the best I've seen Manny. His, his punching power is really just getting better, actually, because I getting mean, better. he's getting used to being at 147, and he's using he's using his leverage and his speed a lot better. And, you know, I'm catching him on the mitts in the, in the Philippines, and my shoulder is killing me one day. So, I mean, I took a day off, and I, for me to take a day off is really fucking unusual. <laughs> but the thing is, so I put Boo Boy in there, and he broke Boo Boy's elbow and wrist. Seriously? So, uh, From yeah. working the pads? Yeah. Oh, my so, God. Um, so then I had... So then, that ever, have you ever seen that in all your years in yeah, boxing? I was laughing. I said, you'd be kidding me. So, uh, so I, I'm back on the on the table. He, uh, he, We did seven rounds yesterday in the mitts, and he heard me a couple times. And uh, But today is probably going to be like a 10-round mid session, and um, I won't be able to sleep too good tonight. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, you've been with Manny for a long time now, um, and, you know, Manny's obviously been fighting for a long time. So how does it change? How does your preparation change? Or how has it changed over the years from the time, say, when he was first started working with you till now? How do you prepare differently? When I first started working with Manny, I was really kind of satisfied with him knocking people out with a big left hand. And, you know, after a while, you know, we started moving up in weight classes and we started fighting bigger and better guys. And it was, I said to myself, I says, I got to be a better trainer. I got to, I got to do my job. I got to make him a better boxer, use the footwork. And I, I need a two fisted fighter. And I worked on his right hand for a long, long time. He was developing that and working with it. And then when he knocked out Diaz with the right hook, it was there. Now he's a two, two, two-fisted fighter he can hurt you with either hand and the footwork's um, unbelievable now and uh, you know a lot of people in the Philippines had criticized me for making him a little bit less exciting and you know just not going out there looking looking for a knockout and boxing and setting things up and so forth and I was criticized a little bit before but in the long run it it worked out very well because we would have never be De La Hoya if he didn't learn those lessons of how to be a, a, a real boxer a professional boxer and not just a big puncher I mean does does that have as much to do with um going moving up in weight as with technique in terms of not getting the knockouts like I kind of think of Manny's career uh in like three phases there's that early stage or maybe maybe it's four stages because there's the, right. the period that I didn't know who he was but then there's that stage where he's where he's having wars with Barrera mm-hmm. and Morales in the early fights with Marquez then the sort of superstar making tr- fights of De La Hoya, Hatton and Cotto and then there's that run and I wanted to ask you specifically about this and you're kind of talking about it now um, when he fought Claudia and Margarito and, you know, Bradley and some of those guys where he w- stopped, you know, the knockout stopped coming. Right. Uh, is that because of un- moving up to, like, what would kind of be an unnatural weight class for him? Yeah, it definitely. I, I, I think his best fighting weight is actually 140 at this point. He'd knock a lot of guys out at 140. But at 47, you have big guys, they're more durable, yep. and they take they just take a better shot, you know, and it takes a lot more to knock a 47-pounder out than it does a 40-pounder. And that's sure. the reason why we... we Stop knocking people out. And then the change in religion also, in that uh, God has told him that he doesn't have to knock his opponent out, out you know, that he doesn't have to hurt has anybody. Has God told him something different for this fight <laughs> next week? I think so. I, I, you know, the thing is, I don't get into religion too much with him and so forth, but I did tell him, I says, I, you know, I says, he's part of the first day I was in the Philippines. I says, wow. I says, that's, 
That's really good. I, I really like what I saw. Did he come and, into camp in shape, and, ready to go? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, he was already in camp before I got there. I got there a little bit late this time. And I the camp was in the Philippines for the most part. In, in Manila, like, yes. Right. And the first time in Manila in a long time, because usually we're in General Santos or Baguio, the altitude or the... Two, two opposite ends right and we're in the middle of this time because he's a senator and he, he, he has to do his job and then when they let him out of work between three o'clock and seven o'clock at night eight o'clock at night that's when we train and then you know but when, once manny comes through the doors he knows what he's uh, up for and his, his sure. work ethic is still great yeah, really really good um do you want to have him talk about Okay, or? I mean, it, we'll definitely hear it, but it's you know it's your call. I don't want to disrupt anybody's it's up to training. You. I don't, okay. it's fine. You can live with it. I sure. know. Yeah. So um, I mean, is there any any sense of regret with Pacquiao at all that he didn't spend more time at the, around 140, you know, doing fights there where he maybe would have been his most natural? Yeah, you know, I mean, we could have stayed there and so forth, but he wouldn't have, he wouldn't have had that 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 those those runs of beating the big guys. And, right, right, right. And I think that's a little bit. Special when you sure. be big guys like that you sure. know? when um, you know um, Manny being really happy going into a fight because he can have breakfast before the fight it, it, it made a difference Where he's not killing himself to make uh, he's, weight he's yes. actually trying to put on weight going put on in. weight right. and then you know so the thing is that struggle of making weight is so overrated to me I, I mean uh, I've moved guys up now like Miguel Diaz I, I'm, I'm Miguel Cotto I'm sorry I moved him up in weight classes so he's comfortable with weight and like he'll smile now because uh, everyone says uh, he never smiles he's kind of an asshole right, he, right, right. I mean I was the an biggest prick guy, in there. Yeah. I was a prick I, making weight was I was mean gave me four fights only because I was hungry right and I had, Literally, nothing, yeah. had nothing to do with the fights yeah he's just hungry so the thing is so you know with Manny um, we could have stayed at like 35 and 40 and just dominated those divisions but to win eight world titles in different classes is historical. to me it's historical because yeah. it I don't think that record will be, will ever be touched. Mm. I don't, and uh, so you know, so Manny's doing really good, and uh, so I see a lot of the old Manny, and then a couple of days came like a couple of days later, and I, I I said, Manny, what happened to that guy that was in the ring the other day? <laughs> and he says, uh, he says, I don't know. He says, it's just uh, you know. He said, I must be a little tired or something like that, you know, and stuff like this. I said, well, I said, Manny, I'm going to get a psychiatrist for you. I said, because, like, I don't know why you, you're great one day and the next couple of days you're just, uh, just okay. And he said, well, Freddie, I'm not a machine. I said, well, I think you are a machine. <laughs> <laughs> we need you to be a machine through so, November 5th. And, 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 the, and the psychiatrist is me. Right. Because I got to get inside his head and make him do this and make him believe in himself. Well, that's that's a real thing. I mean, you know, I never understood that about boxing. Uh, I never took that seriously when you heard guys talking about, oh, getting up for a fight and getting up until, I think, uh, the when Tarver knocked out Roy Jones. Uh, I remember yeah. thinking, like, that's a good example of Roy Jones. Just did, probably didn't give a fuck about that fight and shouldn't have been there. Right. Um, among other things. But, uh, but that's a real thing. Like, how, with all the huge mega fights Manny's done over the years, how do you get him up for this fight? Yeah. With a guy that's maybe not as well known as, you know, some of the other guys he could Right, fought, well, right? one thing that... A lot of people don't understand, you know, Manny knows what's going on out there. He knows right. what this guy's talking. He knows this guy's talking shit. Manny... Does he pay attention to the yes, fight yeah. scene? He, but he won't, he won't make a big deal about it, though, but, he, but he'll, he'll, he'll sink in. It will sink right. in. This kid's, he's killing himself, mm. he, being so cocky. And then um, I'll talk back to him a little bit and stuff like that. But um, you know, basically, you know, Manny wants me to be nice at press conferences, so... No, uh, okay, I, I understand that. Sure. You know, Mandy's had a good reputation and so forth, and he'll do the fighting, and I, and I don't have to, you know. Right. I don't, I don't really have to motivate him because they've already motivated him. Right. And um, so, you know, yesterday, I mean, we're getting close to the fight, and we had a couple of days of uh, bad jet lag. Mm. And we had one day off. We had the next day little sluggish the next day he's feeling better and then we sparred yesterday and it's okay now right now i want you to take your gloves off and we're going to shadow box and loosen up a little bit 
He said, what about the heavy bag and the speed bag and so forth? I said, we, we just peaked. You, you're at your top right now. I don't want you to do anything extra. I don't go over. I mean, I don't... You, to get the guy to peak, I mean, once you get him there, but once you go over, over, it's tough to get it back. So, I mean, that's a real thing, too, in, no, in preparing it, for a fight. How do, how do you... How do you figure that out? Yeah. How do you know when a guy's peaking? You have to know the fighter. You know, right. the thing is, and we've been together 15 years, so I know, like, I know what kind of day he's going to have when he walks through the door. It's going to be a good day or a bad day mm. because I can see a smile on his face, maybe not a smile on his face, or him a little Does he tired, still enjoy the, 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 the training? Does he still enjoy the 100%, prep? 100%, yes. This is what he does best. I mean, his... He trains better than any fighter I've ever had. I mean, I've had some good, good fighters, but nobody's, nobody can come close to him. So, yesterday he shadow boxing and stuff like that, and we we're taking some pictures with some, uh, um, you know, Bob Aaron brought some people in, and uh, I had a couple guys from South Africa that wanted to meet Manny and so forth, fighters. So we took a couple pictures and stuff like that, but we didn't do much after, after the sparring. We just kind of shadow box and maintain it. And now today will be a kind of a, I'm gonna try to make it a light day, just really use, just speed, a lot of mid work and so forth. And then I'll mm. box again on Saturday, and I'll just go a couple rounds. And depending on how sharp he is on Saturday, Monday might be our last day. Right. Um, but I don't think we're gonna box on this Monday. We usually do a last day of sparring on Monday, but this time I think we're already there. Mm -hmm. So I don't want, again. I don't want. I don't want to overdo it. It's just I, I like where he is, and we're just maintaining right now. Right, right. And um, if he goes in there and fights like he did yesterday, he's gonna kill this guy. And we, uh, he assuming, will knock this guy out. Assuming he has a great fight on the fifth. Um, what does he want to do next? You know, I know that there was talk about him retiring after the last fight, yeah. and you know, it's only seven months later, so it's pretty much like he was never retired. It's almost like a quick return to the ring for a top-level boxer nowadays. True. So, what, where does he want to go uh, after Vargas? You know, I think Mayweather is the biggest thing out there right now. I still act, uh, you know, who's Manny, also theoretically but, retired, right? Right, but Manny, <laughs> you know, Manny thought he won that fight. Uh, yeah. I didn't, but the thing is. I, w I was very disappointed in the fight, and I know Manny can fight a much better fight, and I know Manny can beat him, um, and that's... His shoulder's yeah, in good shape now? Yeah, no complaints, no nothing, Right. everything's healthy, uh, no excuses whatsoever. Um, you know, Congress was a little bit taxing, the warm out a little bit, but you know, we have no excuses, everything, we chose everything that happened. Right, right, I mean, right. So it, He's in, he's in the best shape I've seen in a long time. He's a lot more aggressive. Um, my shoulder is really sore today, but it's gonna be really really sore tonight. <laughs> and uh, so uh, you know, but I'm, I'm just gonna do a lot of speed work with him today, and just no, not too much power work, and just hold. I'm kind of, I'm kind of just maintaining right now. Right. And this is what you have to do is you, because if you overtrain a fighter, and there is such a thing. It would be really, really hard to get him back on track. What? I mean, so the thing is, you've got to watch him carefully, and you've got to, you, you've got to pull him out. You right. Know, the thing is, right. and I'm not afraid to do that. Because he's going to want to go hard and yeah, go all week yeah, and all that. Right. Well, he want to go a lot more rounds, and we'll negotiate back and forth. And I, you know, I'll, I'll have a number, and I'll have a number that I'll let him go a couple over just to let him think I'm giving that to him. <laughs> right. So it's a little bit of a mind game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, I always uh, said a, a great uh, trainer is kind of like your therapist. Yes. You know? Because hey, I'll, keep, uh, I'll keep right where I, I won't let him go over. You know, you mentioned the Mayweather fight, obviously, you know, big fight. And now that that's in the rearview mirror, there's something I always wondered, and I'd love to talk to you about it. Because from a, an outsider's point of view, just as a boxing fan's, you know, following that over so many years, waiting for that fight to ever happen, my take on it was, it looked to me like Manny always wanted that fight. Yes. Floyd Mayweather did not want that fight for a long time. And it seemed to me, too, that Bob Arum didn't want that fight. Am I off base? No. Do you, do you, do you yeah. agree or disagree? And, and more specifically, why, I mean, we can all guess, but why do you think Mayweather didn't want to fight him, say, five or six years before they fought? Well, I would say he didn't want to lose. And the thing right. is, Mayweather, you know, he 
picked and chooses his opponents well, and um, he is a good boxer. I won't sure. I won't take that away from him, but the, I mean I can't take that away from him. He is very good and so forth. But the thing is, there are, there's a lot of guys that I mean, he ducked along the way, and a lot he was a lot very, of guys. Lot when of, you look at Mayweather's very, record, very very carefully built. Yes, I mean, he does. When you look at all the guys that he didn't he, fight, yeah, he it's amazing. Have, he doesn't have those runs like Manny had with all the Mexican fighters. And no so one's like. ever gonna need to watch a Mayweather fight again on YouTube the way that we watch you know Hagler Hearns or something like it's never gonna happen you know he's not the most exciting fighter in the world and he's kind of boring more boring now than ever right because he doesn't want he doesn't want to take chances he doesn't want to get hurt and uh, you know then he comes to my gym a couple times in uh, over the last couple months and just he wants to look around and stuff like right, that. So right. he's, he's fishing for something, I'm sure. I said, you're looking for Manny? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so how much of, of what he does it, is just... Not, he, I've always heard he's a great guy in person, a, he, but, he but, but, you know, why... Yeah, because, like, he comes up to me, hi, Mr. Roach, how are you? Yeah, I, I always and, hear he's and, very polite. But I've known him since he was, like, five years old when mm. he was training in the gym. Sure. And um, he's always been... Uh, he's Me and him are okay. You put a camera in front of us, right. we're not so okay. You know, he knows how to sell a fight. I know how to sell right. a fight. And, and I think he knew that he wasn't a, an attraction. And, you know, around the time of that De La Hoy fight, reinvented himself as the, the you know, he's the guy in the black hat. He's, yeah. the, he's the bad guy. And the thing is, you know, the, the Pacquiao fight and stuff like this, I mean, it was such a big event and so forth, and it just didn't live up to it right and i'm a, you think they'll I'm, get a chance to, to little, go again i'm a little embarrassed about that because i you know i'm as uh, my fighter didn't do what i thought what i think he should have done and i can do a better job and he can do a better job and we can we can beat this guy well there was that thing that week of that fight and i was wondering why this wasn't a bigger scandal where mayweather got injected with vitamin saline shot and got an exemption and then they wouldn't let Manny get a shot in his shoulder to deal with the pain with a with a substance that wasn't a banned substance why wasn't that with all the rumors surrounding Mayweather being a dirty fighter all these years and there's a lot of them I mean I would encourage anybody listening to go read that Thomas Hauser article that details it pretty well um, and I also don't want to get sued so I'm not going to say that that's absolutely true or anything I'm just saying it's the big rumors out there why wasn't that a bigger scandal yeah it it was a bigger scandal it was kind of like you know, we we had that all set up for many to get that shot in the locker room, and um, I was kind of hesitant about that. And I, I said we should have it in, maybe in his hotel room, you know. But they they wanted because the shot doesn't last that long. So mm. the thing is, they wanted to do it as close as possible. Sure, so everything sure. set up and so forth. And then the commissioner comes in and looks at it. To ta- what's that table for? Oh, man, he's going to have a shot there. What shot is that? I said, wait a minute, you, you've already okayed this. And then we, I talked to the doctor, and he's, he says, to, the doctor says to him, you okay this? And they, what are you talking about? The guy just played dumb, hmm. and, said, and they took it away from us and wouldn't let it, wouldn't let it go. Um, I mean, is that a normal thing? Have you seen that before in, in professional boxing, somebody getting an injection like that right before a fight? Is that a relatively normal thing? Not normal, but it happens. done. The thing is, right. uh, but the uh, when you do something that close to a fight, you're just getting a pain, uh, me- uh, pain, pain medicine. You're not taking a steroid or anything like that. It's nothing that's going to enhance sure. your, your your fight and so forth. Well, why it's do you just, think Mayweather gets the exemption and you guys don't? I mean, that what's... That, that was a big issue. And right. Then, so now everyone's kind of arguing back and forth and blaming everybody. And his was a banned substance, was it not? Yes. Yeah. But the thing is, so he gets hand injections. We can't do our shoulder injections. And I says, you know what? The, he's fucking bigger than us. Mm. And, I mean, he controls this commission a little bit. I think you know, it's just like the, the, M- the M- It's just like Nevada the MGM having his pictures up while Pacquiao's fighting the main event. You right. Know? It's just, right. Right. Yeah, I mean, the fight before, you know, and Bob yeah. goes crazy. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> that was pretty funny. But you know, uh, but I think that uh, I think Mayweather has to deal with these people. You sure. Know? Sure. Is, sure. Uh, and. Mm, you know the thing is in sport and you know you can't trust anybody because um people will do anything to win and that was that was a factor in this one and we kind of got fucked in that one (laughs) i mean you've been around this sport for a long long time as a top level trainer and of course before that as a fighter um can you reflect a little bit on what is the difference in the sort of the business side of boxing from, say, that golden era in the late 70s through the you know, early 80s compared to now? And, um, and this kind of ties into what we were just talking about with 
with fighters not facing each other. I know you have rival promoters, rival uh, networks, all that sort of thing, yeah. but why don't the fighters take a bigger stand? Why don't yeah. they, because as a fight fan, it just seems like, and I don't know if this is true, you would know, it, it just seems like nowadays they don't want to fight the biggest challenge necessarily. Yeah, true, but I, I don't think any fighter in the world is scared to fight another fighter. Right. Because that's just not the way I was or anyone I know was. I mean, they... But well, they're afraid we, to lose their We will fight anybody, record. but we will fight anybody. Right. And then, but then you get like Mayweather who gets to a point where he's almost like breaking somebody's record where he's going to be very careful about sure. who, he, who he fights and chooses. But it's more the, it's more the promoter. Right. I mean... You know, they're not going to put uh, Canelo in with Pacquiao because, or anybody, because he's their biggest cash cow. Right. And he's their last cash cow. Right. Once or he loses, Triple G, for that matter. They're once, not going to put him in with Triple G no, just yet. Because right? once he loses, there's no more money. Right. I mean, right. right now they can put him in there with a lot of opponents. Well, why do you money. think people didn't care about that as much? You know, in the era when, when Sugar Ray Leonard and, and Hearns and Hagler and Duran, all these guys were fighting each other, it seemed like all the time. I think it was and all the better, other guys yeah. that were just underneath that. You yeah, know? it was a better era of boxing. And the thing is, the, the promoters, no matter how much they hated each other, they promoted fights together. Right. I mean, Don King and Aram hated each other, but they still promoted fights together. Mm. I remember Aram's got a show going on, and Don King's got one of his fighters on the show. Don King goes to get up in the ring, and Bob don't want him in the fucking ring. I see Bob <laughs> run over, grab him by the back of his coat, and tore his coat right off his back. I said, this is fucking That's like great. some professional said, wrestling action is, right this there. This is great. This is, you know, this is, but the thing is, that's a good you know, show. But the thing is, they made the best fights, and right. that's why boxing's not number one right now, and maybe MMA might be taking taking us over right now because we don't have the best fight in the best and we need to do that we really do i mean the thing is al Heyman and all these guys they they have to get along i mean they, they well, gotta start promoting because if you don't have the best fight the best i mean it's gonna kill the sport it leaves me the question though do the people that run boxing and i mean the executive class that mm -hmm. runs boxing the executives at um at you know the networks and the big time promoters do they know fucking anything about what the fans want to see or, or care for that matter? Because as a fight fan, when you see somebody like, I don't know, like Arizandi, yeah. Lara, or these guys get shot after shot after shot, you're like, no one's ever going to care about that guy. Yeah. Those, Why is he on TV? Yeah. Those guys aren't good matchmakers. And in the past, we've had guys that work for TV stations that were, that were good matchmakers and knew, and knew the fight game. So, um, uh, you know, the thing is, the, the game has changed a lot. And right. uh, uh, again, the the politics of it, and the uh, you know the, the the different promoters now, and every everybody like um, just being a little bit too careful, I think, and so forth. And, I mean, I'm a fight fan uh, to the bone, but it yeah. they they sure make it hard. They, <laughs> so I to, mean, the to thing stay is, a fight fan. Yeah, uh, to me, like you know, the era of the '70s, the early '70s was fucking unbelievable everyone fought everybody right and so forth and now nobody's fighting nobody and uh you know that you know, we do have the uh, mma coming in and making mm -hmm. a lot of noise there and the thing is about the mma people is that they have to fight each other right because they have no choice and I think that should be more of a case than the fighters that they have to fight these guys within a certain amount of time. You used to have mandatories, you know, where you had mm. to fight the mandatory, but the, the, no, nobody gives a shit about that. The, you know, you, we'll go with the super champion or the double super champion. <laughs> right, right. Uh, like, what, the, what yeah. the fuck is a double super guy? <laughs> right. uh, it's it's, it's un, uh, yeah. unbelievable, you know. So the thing is, and the one thing about Manny, though, he, he's always wanting to fight the best, and right. he always wants to, the people to get their money's worth. Sure. You know? So like, so he's fighting a guy that's a two-time world champion, and nobody really knows a lot about this guy, and he's not very famous and stuff like this. But to win two world titles, he's got to be good. I mean, because you and, know, and he almost knocked out Tim Bradley, or maybe even did knock out Tim right, Bradley. Right. In that, so, that but fight. winning titles is not an easy thing to do. Sure. So, um, you know, we're in a tough fight. Obviously, they think the young guy's going to beat the old guy, and. Could happen, but right. I don't think so. But you know, and then you know, Bob likes Terrence Crawford a lot. Yeah, and uh, he's well, going to say, where try, does, try where does make, Manny go from try, here? Trying to make him the next pay per view star. Right. And you think like, that's that'll be his next fight? Maybe him or possibly, Lomachenko or one of these guys. 
Lemonchenko, I love, but the thing is, I think he's too small. Right. But the thing is, but the, someone someone mentioned that yesterday. But it's uh, it would be a great fight, and I've seen him train here and so forth. And Manny would destroy him. But you know, Crawford. <laughs> but you know, Terence Crawford is a good. He's like a young Mayweather who he can run a little bit and right. so forth. And Manny can cut the ring off and find him. But it would be a difficult style of fight. But sure. the thing is. Uh, I mean, the thing is, we, Manny will not turn down anybody because, I mean, right. he'll fight whoever the best guy is and whoever the people want him to fight because Manny is, fights for the people. I right. mean, and just like he fights for the people because he, he fights for his hometown people also and he fights for his country. Right. You know, because he's a, he's a very, very good good person. Yeah. I mean, he's... And is he is he still beloved at home now that he's been in politics for a while? Because I yeah, imagine know, that could have a corrosive effect on your yeah, reputation. It could, but he's still very loved at home. And, and uh, you know the thing is about the politics. You know, you, you, you're speaking about a third world country, and anything the Americans say, well, why are they saying that over there and stuff like this? But over there, it fits. Over there, it has to be like that because right. it's a third world country. I mean, over here, it's a little bit easier. I mean, America is a lot better, you know, better off than the Philippines is. I mean, what's it? Three hundred million homeless people in the Philippines. I, I, the numbers really? outrageous. Wow. I, I said, you'd be kidding me. Yeah. But you know, when you walk the streets, and like I did for the last month. And uh, you see them every day, and it's like, just, it's a, it's a poor place and so forth. But Manny wants to improve it, and right. the, the thing is, he is genuine with it. He does. He'll spend his own money. He will be broke, probably for the rest of his life, because he will give his money away and he will give it to the people. Really? Not because he'll spend. He won't spend it himself. He will give it. He's a, that's how generous he is. Really? Mayweather might go broke spending his money in gambling. <laughs> Mayweather, Manny's the complete opposite cat. He just yeah. he just doesn't work like that. I mean, he grew up so poor. He, you know, selling donuts at the red lights and so forth. Right. And he, I mean, he knows what it is to be poor. I mean, sure. And not everybody in America knows that. You know, we have welfare and stuff like that over there. You know. Yeah. If you don't have a fucking job, you're fucked. That's all there is to it. Right, you, right. you got no choice. Like someone said, why would someone eat a dog? I said, well, he might be hungry. I said, you know, because like that's Cause he's all, that hungry. That's the last choice. Right. I mean, it, but that's the way it is. I mean, it's really, it's how it is. I mean, everyone says to me, Freddie, why don't you like retire and re come to the Philippines and live a good life and so forth? You know, and I say to him, <laughs> it's not that nice here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, to be honest yeah. with you, like, yeah. you know, America, I'll stay in LA. America is the best place in the world. <laughs> right, I right. mean, we take a lot of things for granted. Sure. Uh, and a lot of things like what the president says and what Manny agrees with the president and so forth, you know, that's all. The issues are so different there than here. I mean, they ha they might have to well, do we, it over We have there. our own circus going on this year. In this year, I mean, is this really the two best people in the world? Right. Give me a fucking break. Right, Jesus right. Christ. I mean, I, 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 I can't pick either one. Right. So, yeah, no, I believe you, know, you me. I'm yeah. in the same boat. But, hey, you know, they, they told me, they asked me the other day if Donald Trump could beat up uh, Biden in a fight. So I did I did pick him to win, but, huh. but they were telling me I better be careful because Biden, they say Biden is in like pretty good shape. I don't know. Yeah, I'd go with Biden on that <laughs> oh, one. Yeah? yeah? Oh, yeah. Like, you know, he seems meaner to me. Because yeah, you know, the other guy's kind of a street guy in New Jersey, you know, all those Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, bad here too. You take away his bodyguards. <laughs> I don't know. I think Biden's got that fight. Okay. <laughs> I, I, we'll see. I, 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 went the other I way. like it, though. That's a good fight. That's a good pick em fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know, one last thing. How do you, uh, as a trainer, you know, boxing's a strange sport because it's not like, you know, a professional sports team that can rebuild as, you know, the athlete's age or whatever. How do you find the next Manny Pacquiao? Are you going around to amateur fights? Are you scouting like that? I mean, you're so uh, well known. I imagine people would probably just come through your door every day. They come, and I, you know, and I'm, I'm looking, and, you know, but the next Manny Pacquiao is, that's a dream. There's, there's no such thing. I mean, but I did build this gym for one reason. I said, you never know when the next Muhammad Ali is going to walk through your door. Right. You know, and then uh, less than six months later. A really small one did. <laughs> 122 pound Muhammad Ali uh, came walking through your walking door. Walking through my door and asked me, can we do mitts? And I said, yeah, sure. So well, after one round, we, we had, it was there. We just went together, you know, and yeah. uh, it's been great. And 
together for 15 years is unbelievable because mm. usually you know, I, I would have been fired like five times by now because he lost a couple fights right. and didn't win them all. And somebody yeah. Boxing trainer, that's a high turnover but Manny, gig. But Manny doesn't blame people. He blames himself because mm. he's the one in the ring. Yeah. He's a really, I mean, he's a very, very good person. I mean, he's mm. he's like the best guy I've ever met in this sport. I mean, yeah. he's really a good guy. And he's changed my life. I mean, if he, uh, but the thing is, I mean, I am waiting for that next one. I, I have a couple young prospects, good guys and so forth. Got a little problems with them because talented people always have problems. Are you he, talking about Frankie Gomez by chance? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> you know, is, is Frankie Gomez going to get to that level or is he going to be the next Francisco Panchito Bajado or uh, whatever? You know what I mean? Yeah. Which is like such a common thing in he boxing weighs, that you see these weighs, guys with all the talent yeah, that don't kind of keep he it together. He 180 pounds now and I, he has been in the gym since I left. Mm. Yeah, when we're together, it's great and he's yeah. a very talented guy but um uh, yeah i don't know i think he he, he might end up one of those, one of those people you know right, he's right. the he's the king of boyle heights and i think he's satisfied with that and um there's so much up more out there i think right but, you know it's that's how it goes you know um you know guys like manny pacquiao they're rare very right. rare so but I, I i am still looking though well, you know, normally on my podcast, I interview other musicians, um, and normally at the end of the, of the interview, they, they play and sing a song. So what <laughs> song are you going to sing for us today, Freddie? <laughs> I'm the worst singer in the world. <laughs> the only song I know is Happy Birthday. <laughs> yeah, that'll work. Um, dude, thank you so much. I know it's a very busy day, and yeah, I really no appreciate you talking thanks. to me. So thank you. are you still in Seattle? No, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm here in L.A. But Seattle originally, yeah. right? Well, the band oh, the started band. up there. Oh, okay. I was never a Seattle guy. Oh, you're yeah, yeah. L.A. guy? Well, I'm a Santa Barbara guy originally. Oh, Santa Barbara. Yeah. Nice place. Yeah, yeah, sure. I've been to um, college ones. Oh, yeah. Oh, should I should I mention that? Sure. Well, I'm definitely going to do that in the thing, but we should definitely mention I that the Pacquiao versus Vargas uh, pay-per-view is live on November 5th. What's Don't that? forget it. Tune in. Oh. Oh, I'm just doing an infomercial. I'm sorry. Hey, <laughs> before we, uh, before we, uh, we wrap this up, could you just say, hey, this is Freddie Roach. And you're listening to All right, that was Freddie Roach, a superstar boxing trainer, trainer of Manny Pacquiao, among others. Make sure you tune in on uh, Saturday, November 5th. That's this Saturday to see Pacquiao's fight with Vargas. See where he's at now that he is no longer retired. That's probably the shortest retirement in boxing history. I think it was like seven months. Anyway, we'll be back. We might have actually one more special um, uh, Walk in the Floor episode this week. And if whether or not we do, we'll be back next Monday um, regardless. And while you're uh, missing us, make sure you go and subscribe to Walk in the Floor in the iTunes store. It really helps the show out a lot. Keeps it free. Go back and listen to those old episodes, and we'll talk to you soon. This is Chris Shiflin on Walking the Floor. Adios, amigos!